Hi everyone, welcome to our first um, Zalando fashion talk on the topic of merchandising. My name is Sandra Ocimek and I am a um, recruiter here in the fashion team. Um, I joined Zalando a year and a half ago and I'm originally from Poland and today together with me are two senior merchandise planners, Flo and Chris. Can you maybe introduce yourselves? Yeah, hi, I'm Christian from Germany. I'm the senior merch planner, as already mentioned, in the Young Fashion Trend Unit, and I'm working uh, for Zalando for one and a half years now. Mm. Yeah, and I'm Florence. I'm a senior merch planner for the premium brands on Zalando, and I've joined Zalando three years ago now. Mm. Okay, sounds interesting. We would be interested to hear more and get some more insights. Um, but I think we can start with getting to know more about your journey to become a merchandise planner. Mm -hmm. Well, and then I start. Um, well, my first job in, in fashion okay. was an internship at Hugo Boss in New York in the wholesale mm -hmm. department. That was about like nine years ago. And then after finishing my studies, I started as a so-called merchandise controller mm -hmm. at Pick and Kloppenburg in the Eastern European headquarter in Vienna. That was mm -hmm. responsible. We were responsible for Eastern Europe, um, uh, Austria and Switzerland. Mm -hmm. After that, I was uh, the senior merchant, uh, senior planner at Hugo Boss and mm -hmm. the headquarter in Metzing. I was responsible for women's wear and shoes and accessories. I did that for one and a half years and responsible for EMEA, EMEA mm -hmm. so that's like, uh, yep. well, Europe, Middle East, Africa and 400, mm -hmm. well, roughly 400 stores. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as already mentioned, Last January 2018, oh. I started with yeah, Zalando. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, from my side, mm -hmm. I'm, I actually started in uh, marketing product development, uh, working for mm -hmm. luxury brands mm -hmm. in France. And then I moved on into country merchandising mm -hmm. for fast fashion brand uh, in Spain. Mm -hmm. And from there, combining the product development and uh, mm -hmm in-season steering and sales management, then I moved on planning and merchandising mm -hmm. uh, here in Germany for Zalando. Mm -hmm. So you moved to Germany to join Zalando? Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And since you joined Zalando, how has your career progressed? So I actually started as a mm -hmm. merch planner, uh -huh. so on manager level, and it was for the private level business. Mm -hmm. So we were in charge of developing a collection mm -hmm and making sure the assortment is mm -hmm. efficient and nice for our customers. Mm -hmm. And from that, I moved on recently to the brand business on Zalando. So this is within category management. And here we are partner, partnering mm -hmm. with brands actually. So moving mm -hmm. from a collection building onto a brand uh, partnership, it's actually a very logical mm -hmm. move. Because if you understand a bit the background, how a brand would uh, plan itself, its collection, mm -hmm. then obviously the merchandise planner mm -hmm. uh, insight comes very, very handy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the switch internally was actually very, very smooth and easy because mm -hmm. I mean, we're a merchandiser, we work for the same company. So mm -hmm. we, all wor we already work together. Mm -hmm. And since we know each other, it's also making like a nice from one team to another change. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. And I'm wondering, what did you study and was it actually helpful in your career? Um, I studied uh, social sciences and business at the University of Mannheim. Uh -huh. um, well, my focus on my studies, um, especially and towards the end, was on different market economies yeah. and, and the uh, system behind it. Um, so part of my studies were a lot of data analysis, research, etc. Mm. So working with numbers, statistics, analyzing mm -hmm. it, understanding it. So that is a huge part of my job, helping me to, to understand the numbers mm. that I see every day, because that's like one of the biggest parts of my job is mm -hmm. reading numbers and analyzing them and uh, well, mm -hmm. then seeing, okay, what, what to which uh, action plans or strategies does that lead. And then the other part that's really helpful from, from my studies mm -hmm is, well, as already mentioned, the, the different market economies and how they work, because we work in different markets and you have to like uh, take into account all right, how differently they work. For example, the UK and Germany are quite different um, market systems. And well, then of course, sociology and social psychology helps you a lot to understand the customer mm. herself, like uh, what's driving her, uh, what's her motivation, how can you satisfy her? And yeah, so all mm -hmm. parts of my studies, most of them are really helpful in my mm -hmm. job. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
for? Yeah, for me, well, mm -hmm. I actually studied science mm -hmm. with a strong focus on mathematics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I could never have imagined back in the days mm -hmm. that actually mathematics, I would be using this every single, single day. day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it comes to Excel, just a mm -hmm. basic Excel sheet, then you have to have some logic because you understand the formulas that works mm -hmm. behind and make you much, much more efficient if you understand a bit the language. Mm -hmm. And then I studied uh, business and economics. Mm -hmm. And this is like tremendously helpful every mm -hmm. day because when it comes to take a decision actually and we have to understand, okay, mm -hmm. how does that make an impact mm -hmm. from an accounting point of view or how does that change the positioning of the company in mm -hmm. the market if I do that or I do that? And this is somehow all this background we have on business and economics, that market positioning mm -hmm. and yeah. all of this, customer understanding, this is where it's getting like every day mm -hmm. in the daily business. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. Good, and I think that we can all agree that Zalando offers an interesting and a unique environment, but I wanted to understand a bit more what makes your current job role different to what you did before, uh, before joining Zalando. Well, for me, it's the first time that I work for a pure online retailer. Mm. So working really from mm. an online environment gives you much more playground mm. as a merchandiser when mm. it comes to knowing your customer, all the data, it's much more open mm. on understanding your customer that you mm. can have in a traditional brick and mortar retail mm -hmm. business. Mm. Um, yeah, for, for me it's a similar situation. Um, the, the companies I used to work for are quite, well, both of them exist for a hundred years or more. Mm. So Zalando just uh, had its uh, 10 years uh, anniversary, anniversary year last year. Yes. And well, so there's a big difference because the old co um, other companies, of course, they, they uh, developed and everything, but uh, Zalando cr um, was created on a different idea. Yeah. So this is what you can feel here every day. It's also like a pure onliner, mm. uh, online retailer. My old company, I was in touch with the online department, but mm. uh, well, not you cannot compare it to the size we have here and um, yeah and also from my perspective what, what I, where I progressed was to learn more about uh, the, the online market um, mm -hmm. which is quite different to, to the retail mm -hmm. stores that I was more used to and also um, on mm -hmm. leading people because mm -hmm. now I have a bigger team than I used to have and mm -hmm. also like uh, the way you lead people or how you work here yeah. at Zalando. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the answer. I think we are also all interested to know a bit more about your role in more detail. So what are your day-to-day -day tasks? If you can tell us mm -hmm. what it actually means to be a merchandise planner here at Zalando. Um, well, you, well, basically the job, um, it, well, mm -hmm. you have the task, you have to care, take care of the budgets, you have to take mm -hmm. care of the planning, in-season management, the, mm -hmm. all these uh, parts but uh, generally it's like you you're a problem solver and mm. you're delegating you're kind of like a d conductor you have to to arrange everything mm. you have to make sure everything is working mm. and um, sometimes to be a bit like a like kind of a smart ass mm. because this is what people mm -hmm. also expect mm -hmm. of you and uh, well it's it's very challenging and mm. but it's it's fun it's like uh, mm. I always like riddles or mm. uh, something like that and this is what you have here every day mm. every day you have a new challenge mm. something new to solve uh, so it's not a mm. re uh, very repetitive mm -hmm. job that's mm. that's the fun in it mm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And how wow. would you describe your role uh, well I would say we start we start usually with like obviously a bit of reporting and mm. that's the thrill of it right it's yeah. like what happened what happened how mm. did we do so either it's like yesterday or last week or last month or mm. last year even and then based on that well we prepare ourselves mm. uh, during the day for what's next mm -hmm. you know where we have the past and now we are mm. looking into the future mm. so it's really starting mm. okay how did we do where do we want to go mm. and how do we get there mm. And then, as Christian just mentioned, it's like, okay, optimizing, uh, making sure that our team works efficiently. There's no, like, duplicated task or mm -hmm. whatsoever that, as a team, we get there. Mm -hmm. And to make sure that uh, the buying team is provided with anything they need, yeah. like, especially with information and everything, yeah. that yeah, they true. have the perfect information to do their buys. Mm -hmm. That's also our responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've heard that Mondays are super busy um, days for oh, yeah. the planners. Can you tell us a bit more how it looks like here? Um, well, in the past, no one like mm -hmm. ever said, like, oh, I love the Mondays at work. Um, yeah. 
actually here it changed um, <laughs> for me at least. I like the Mondays. We have the so-called mm -hmm. trade Mondays where we talk about the numbers for the week before that we uh, um, develop our strategy for for, mm -hmm. for the week or for the upcoming weeks, so some more in the short mm -hmm. term. Um, and I'm allowed to talk about numbers in front of everybody and they have to <laughs> listen to what I say. So I think that's quite Makes quite Monday, something. Yeah, yeah, my family and my friends wouldn't do that. So mm -hmm. well, I have my job to do that. <laughs> I'm quite to nice. you. No worries. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much. Um, and I think, uh, Chris, you've just mentioned um, working with buyers. Yeah. Uh, so everyone who knows a bit about merchandising and buying knows that um, those teams have to work closely together, but we would like to understand a bit more how it actually is here at Zalando. So how important is your relationship with buyers? Um, well, let's put it like that with the senior buyer from, uh, from my team. Well, it's a very close relationship mm -hmm. to buying the merchandising mm -hmm. team. And to be honest, I talk more to, to my senior buyer than I talk to my mom or my best friends. So mm -hmm. I think that tells, tells you a lot. And she always uh, has one uh, slogan, uh, that we actually, uh -huh. everybody follows is one team, one dream. So mm -hmm. we are together, we are successful, mm -hmm. we fail together, but also yep. we celebrate together. True. It's everything, well, the team spirit is really important. So it's, um, we do not put our egos in front of anything. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, all right, but this is my role. I don't mm -hmm. do this. Everybody does everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, most important is like the outcome, the, um, the, the results, mm -hmm. and to have everybody included. And everybody is really mm -hmm. uh, motivated here. This is also, it's also mm -hmm. a cultural thing. I don't think this would work everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is a certain mindset we have mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. What about the clashes? Any? Well, yeah, of course. Uh, I think, um, well, as in every good relationship, yep. you sometimes mm -hmm. have the moments where you fight. But mm -hmm. uh, this is also um, based on trust. Okay. But because in my opinion, you can only fight like properly mm -hmm. with someone you actually trust because um, no one takes anything like uh, personal yep. and it's just like the fighting mm -hmm. is more about like, all right, where do we go? And then in the end, we, we find the perfect solution. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this is part mm -hmm. also like celebrating together mm -hmm. and having fun together. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, it's like a little family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually somehow. I believe that uh, a buyer should be able to do to some extent the job of a merchandiser yeah. and the other way around True. that because we are so complementary, we support yeah. them with the data mm. from the past and the data that would support a future decision when they are super product driven, mm. they know the trends, they know what's going to be hot next. Mm. And this is something we don't really see in the numbers, mm. right? So mm. we are here to back up those strategy to go there. Mm. All right. If we go there based on those uh, insights that we have, based on patterns that we have observed, mm -hmm. we believe this is a tremendously good decision, mm -hmm. or maybe it's a bit a risky mm -hmm. decision. So here comes the fight in the nice way, yeah. because it's like, yeah. why is it risky? Why not? Mm -hmm. And then you work on together mm -hmm. and find, OK, and actually the good decision mm -hmm. is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I had this with all the buyers in my, in, in my past that I had a really good relationship and where the work was really, really good, mm -hmm. that we all, you, you have this level of trust where you can do that. Mm -hmm. And where I totally agree is like the buyer should be able to do the job yeah. of a planner and vice versa. Actually, for myself, I, when I started, I actually intended to be a buyer. Where when then I found out that I actually, well, have more fun in reading the numbers mm -hmm. than being mm -hmm. in the showroom. Although um, every buyer that I work with, uh, they are really good at numbers as yeah. well. So, um, but they have, to, they should focus on their assortment. But they have to be able to read the numbers, what they also like do all the time. And we have to focus on numbers, but we also should be able to like uh, understand mm -hmm. the product. Yes, exactly. Not knowing the product as a, that's uh, mm. no, it's no You have to understand mm. the product mm -hmm. and have to have a certain affection to it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, thank you so much. Uh, so we talked a bit more about your background. We know what your day-to-day -day job is, relationship with the buyers. Um, now, now I wanted to talk a bit more about the skills that are crucial for your role. Mm -hmm. And I think we can start with the hard skills. So maybe Flo, you can tell us what do you think is the crucial uh, part on the hard uh, skill side? Yeah, so hard skill. For me, one of the most important mm. hard skill, I would say, is everything really computer related. Mm. Because somehow we rely so much on mm. whatever the machine is able to do for us, that if you're unable 
to understand yeah. the machine or like understand the logic that goes behind and you, you're just going to be stuck mm. and not be able to overcome to go the extra mile whereas if you understand okay this is the logic in mm. the background this is how it thinks mm. so this is how i can make it work better mm -hmm. to make me mm -hmm. more efficient mm -hmm. somehow so everything computer related really mm -hmm. i think will be like a Okay. A super important hard skill. Mm -hmm. So computer related yeah. tools. Not mm -hmm. not that we design softwares or anything. Yeah. It's just that we rely yeah. we rely on them and then to yeah. understand also to be able to assess is this the correct correct mm -hmm. thing? Okay. Then I would say yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris? Yeah, I would agree on that. It's about mm -hmm. understanding the logic because like the different uh, planning systems, for example, every company mm -hmm. uses they all follow the same logic. If you mm -hmm. understand the logic and how it works, mm -hmm. you do not need to like particularly know. I have to press this button or that button. Mm -hmm. You have to have a, well an understanding in that mm -hmm. and experience. Only thing that I would add, well, it's, well, it's part of it as well as the um, having like a proper background in data analysis mm -hmm. to not yeah. just being able to describe the numbers because we mm -hmm. actually have to understand exactly. the numbers mm -hmm. to understand like okay why is this num KPI appearing why is the customer why is she buying into that mm -hmm. um, th this leads to all kinds of decisions or to your strategy like uh, for example on how long can I sell this mm -hmm. etc etc mm -hmm. okay perfect thank you yeah. so we talked about the hard skills now Clearly, the soft skills, and I think, Chris, you mentioned before, uh, being a problem solver, uh, working with the challenges, so I would assume those are the crucial soft skills for you. Anything you would like to add on that? Um, well, there are a, few, a lot of soft skills. Mm -hmm. Well, on the one hand, of course, we, we, uh, we have to be really good at data, kind of be a yeah. almost mm. be a nerd in that um, area. But on the other hand, <coughs> if you're just like a cold, uh, numbers-driven person, you're also not um, at the right spot mm -hmm. because you have to first of all be really, really patient. Mm -hmm. Patience is key. Mm -hmm. Problem solving. Mm -hmm. You have to be really good with people. Mm -hmm. Just like, for example, com um, communication, um, yeah. empathy is important. You have to to work with people all day. You're mm -hmm. sitting in meetings. Um, you have to to well all the kinds of stakeholders you have, and uh, this is very important. If you if you're someone who's just like um, prefers to work alone and just like focus on the numbers, it's not the right spot because uh, people and these kind of soft skills are really important there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. for me, problem solving. Uh, yeah. Christian is totally right. Problem solving because if you are not able to overcome a problem, you just get stuck, stuck mm -hmm. right? And the, I believe that the way that we could approach it the best is like, okay, take a bit of like the balcony view. Mm. What is happening here? Because if you have like a doubt on something, you know, we know our jobs and at some point we realize, oh, there's mm. something wrong in there. So it does, like, it doesn't really make sense. Maybe there's something not working properly in the background. So then, you know, you will break it down it like in little buckets and address it. Okay, this part, yeah, it looks like it's all right. Mm. Yeah, it makes sense. And there, yeah, 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 indeed, the logic is correct. And here, oh, wow, now here there's something wrong, doesn't work. And then here comes the communication part mm -hmm. that Christian just mentioned because we are not working just by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're working with buyers. We're working with tech, mm -hmm. with tech people that are building the tools for us. So if we believe this is, let's say, data mismatch somewhere, then we will have to talk to them. Hey, guys, can you investigate? There might be something that has not been refreshed properly. We believe that there is a misalignment on that. Can you please support? So here comes mm. yeah. the communication and stakeholder management mm -hmm. somehow to make things happen. And mm -hmm. afterwards, <coughs> once you have solved the problem, then mm -hmm. ready to rumble once mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Much better. Yeah, or for a negotiation with suppliers, for example, oh, yeah. then mm -hmm. you cannot just like call the supplier or send them an email, and just like the numbers, and that's it, and you will mm -hmm. get what you want. It's a personal um, level that you have to mm -hmm. uh, work on, and, and it's a lot of appreciation. And also, what I know from the past, and this is what makes a difference, so, uh, or what uh, separates. Zalando from a lot of competitors that we have um, that we are not at, as aggressive um, mm. towards our um, suppliers because uh, it can be sometimes quite tough there, and this is something where we actually um, well actively decided to not to be that kind of a company mm. to push everybody and on the long term that helps you as well because mm. uh, then you can cr um, establish a good relationship a personal relationship with the with the brand's professional but based on trust and that 
helps you um, growing as well. Yeah, partnership. Yeah, it's a partnership, of course. Yeah, partner. Partnership. Okay, good. So building the relationship, being yeah. able to work on the partnership. Mm -hmm. That sounds fair enough. Um, amazing. So now what I wanted to know, because we all know that Zalando is not only about fashion, but also about technology. Uh -huh. So the question is, how does data and technology fit into your role? And I think, Chris, you mentioned already a lot about data and how important that is. So, mm -hmm. Flo, what about technology and data <laughs> for you? Well, uh, I would say data is like at the very mm. essence of mm -hmm. our job, really. If we don't have data, then we can't be merchandisers, right? Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's, uh, it's a very, at the end, like tech is actually one of our main stakeholders because mm -hmm. they also need from us to understand mm -hmm what we need, what kind of information and how we would like it to be processed. Mm -hmm. So that then afterwards, here comes our mm -hmm. expertise into analysis and giving the data a meaning mm -hmm. to later on take a decision from like what mm -hmm. our customer wants, what he or she are desiring, make sure that we have it. Mm -hmm. And this is all based on what tech has built mm -hmm. for us in the first place. We have amazing tool at Zalando. I've never seen so many like dashboards mm -hmm. with so many angles of focus which is, it's like a gold mine of mm. really uh, tech plus data analysis. Yeah, and the good thing is it's uh, most of the time working and uh, like this is uh, something really special f yeah, I yeah. can tell you from experience. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, <coughs> although a lot of people like sometimes like, oh, this is not working or th that, like the um, quality here from our, of our systems is mm. amazing. Uh, oh, yeah. There's like, what you can complain about is like, tiny it's uh, yeah. that's impressive and that makes the job first of all easier mm -hmm. faster yeah. Um, yeah it's it's way quicker to to find a solution uh, a decision because you get the numbers mm. right away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay good thank you um, now my next question is um, a bit on um, I mean, your expertise in uh, fashion merchandising, because I wanted to know how this field has changed over the last couple of years. I can imagine it has changed completely with the technology, the tools. Um, but yeah, if I can get more insights from it, that would be amazing. Yeah, well, coming from a retail business uh -huh. and working now on an online business, uh, it has definitely mm. shifted a lot. and. Because we saw it, we, s we saw it and we see it every day mm -hmm. now in like the natural behavior is when for us, you know, as individuals, we can shop everywhere online on Instagram, on any kind of social media. Mm -hmm. So this has created so much more data mm -hmm. volume that for merchandisers like us, it's way more under about understanding mm -hmm. what does a customer want and how can we provide what they want on Zalando.com mm -hmm. and really this was not necessarily the focus a few mm -hmm. years ago and coming from marketing, product mm -hmm. marketing, where it was more about the product and then finding the market, where here we have the market because we have so much more access to online shops and so on and data than we provide mm -hmm. the product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <coughs> well, I think especially over the last five years, the market changed a lot, um, mostly because of all the online retailers who mm -hmm. came into play. But in general, I think uh, with uh, the start of H&M and Zara mm -hmm. and all these brands, uh, which are here for well decades now already, um, that was actually, I think, the start. But over the last few years, um, what is established right now um, in the mind of the customer, mm -hmm. no matter if it's like uh, cheap or premium or whatever, uh, it is, buy now, wear now. The customer, like especially in Germany, you had uh, that the customer, for example, that something for summer, she was buying like three months in advance. Or mm. if you, um, for winter, winter jacket you bought in September or like in August to wear it in November. You do not have that anymore. Yeah. Everything, mm -hmm. um, what the customer sees online, on Instagram or wherever, or on, in the movie, or she just mm. thinks I, I'd like to have that, she goes to her phone most of the time or to her computer and then looks it up and mm. she orders it where she gets it mm. um, quickly and she has the transparency. So a lot of um, our competitors who are in the game, like who have an another background who are not mm. onlineers but have like a retail background with department mm. stores and everything, um, 
they still think it's just about prices, that mm -hmm. the customer is just price sensitive. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. The price sensitiveness is rather coming from the transparency that mm -hmm. especially the internet is creating. The mm -hmm. customer has way more knowledge. It's the difference yeah. if you live in a little town like 30 years ago, where it's one store or two stores and you have no nothing to compare. Now she can look online, all right, how much does that cost? And she knows also like what's the value of something. Mm -hmm. What can I expect for a dress uh, of a dress that is like 60 mm -hmm. or 70 euro? Um, all of that changed quite a lot. And uh, I think it's not the prices. It's uh, also like she's taking um, caring way more about the quality. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have to uh, deliver a certain quality, but it's also like a uh, consciousness that's uh, getting more and more important. This is, for example, something that is uh, very important in my unit, or, but also in general for Zalando is sustainability. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, this, we have quite a fair share of our assortment is now sustainable mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. That's a big topic for sure. Yeah. Good. Thank you so much. Now um, we're changing the topic a bit, um, so from the merchandising expertise we would like to know more about your biggest challenge so far. So what has it been and how did you and maybe together with your team um, cope with it? For me, the, in my units, like, the biggest challenge was to address like, a very, very big growth, mm? so it's how to sustain mm -hmm. such a booming uh, sales curve somehow. Mm -hmm. So in premium, uh, we want to maintain the momentum. So how did we address that? Well, we are working closer than ever with the brands that uh, we've been already working mm -hmm. with. So it's that's when again it mm -hmm. comes into a partnership really more than on the supplier slash customer relationship. It's like, how can we grow together? How can we develop mm. even further? So goes by going back to merchandising, it's like, okay, what kind of data do we need? What kind of insight? How is our customer reacting to this kind of product? What are they looking for mm. now? How can we have this? What brand would be able to partner with us mm. on creating such a product? And yeah, I would say that's one of the big challenge. Mm -hmm. Keep on growing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, definitely keep on growing. This is one of the, uh -huh. like the our like the company strategy as well. And uh, the unit I'm working in is mm. uh, young fashion trend, and as well mm. implicate the name already implicates. It's uh, we are working. We have a lot of like small brands, upcoming brands that we are developing. We want to grow, and. Uh, well, the challenge here is, well, first of all, we had some restructuring, mm -hmm. so we have a lot of new brands in the portfolio right now. But compared to the brands I used to work with in the past, which were like more established in the market, it was in the premium and the luxury segment, um, you were working with people on the wholesale side that were experienced and uh, like, like big ships, mm -hmm. or how you want to call them. And, um, now I'm working with all these little brands where you have also less experienced people because uh, mm -hmm. sometimes they are, uh, these are their own brands that mm -hmm. they just founded a few years mm -hmm. ago. So it's uh, the people I deal with, um, they are mostly younger and less experienced. And so you have to like also, since it's a partnership, you have to also mm -hmm. support them sometimes, not, not, all, not for all brands. But uh, that also creates kind of a challenge sometimes because things that you thought mm -hmm. like, well, Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily always the case. But on the other hand, they come up with new ideas, and this is why they are upcoming in other older brands who think they can still work the way they did uh, like mm -hmm. 30 or 40 years ago are declining. And these are mm -hmm. have new ideas, and they mm -hmm. are also um, way more motivated and uh, ambitious. It's, uh, um, they have more fire and uh, emotion in there. That mm -hmm. makes it also more fun to deal with them, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, thank you. Um, so the next on the agenda is what are you most excited about um, in mm. the next year or the next season? And maybe you can tell us a bit about your aspirations or goals. How oh well? Mm. Well, in premium, uh -huh. we have a lot to be excited, excited about. about. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't know where to start, <laughs> but let me give you just this mm. hint. It's like we are about to have Capsule collection, mm. so hot, 
<laughs> you won't know where to start looking, like really, <laughs> apart from Zalando.de, uh -huh. really. But uh, this is going to be amazing, really. So this is like super exciting coming up. So mm -hmm. stay tuned, really, because. Mm -hmm. So hot capsule collection. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Outstanding looking partnership. Looking forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, similar for, for our unit, we have also uh, a few uh, capsule collections. Um, well, but then mm. to see just like where where the, uh, the all the new brands, how they are uh, performing when they start, and yeah. the other brands that we already have for some time, but they're still young and new, where they, where, um, yeah, how they develop, where mm. they, they go, and uh, if everything uh, works out the way we planned it, and uh, yeah, this is quite exciting. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So still about excitement, but this time, what makes you excited about coming to work? Um, well, although I know this sounds like a cliche, but it's actually really true. Um, it's uh, it's really the people here at, at Zalando. Um, um, yeah, you, as I already mentioned in the beginning, the atmosphere here yeah. is very different. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not competitive among um, mm -hmm. your colleagues. It's uh, very well. You have a big team team spirit. And um, honestly, if sometimes you're, do not, you're not in a good mood and you come to the office and uh, I see my team and yeah. my colleagues, uh, yeah. that lifts your mood. And everybody's always like um, supporting each other and mm. it's just not just like uh, restricted to my uh, area where I'm working or yours. It's like everywhere you go here within the company, mm. how, how people approach you mm. and uh, this is something that I, th well, I feel like is really important for the company mm. as well. And where we also focus mm. on when, for example, if uh, there are additions to our team, that everybody is like uh, fitting into the uh, mm. like in the, into the culture, mm. and uh, that makes it a lot of fun and mm. uh, yeah, enjoying coming to work mm. Mm. and being able to bring your dog to work. And I can bring my son <laughs> exactly, my dog. Yeah, <laughs> of course. And everybody, yeah, I would say everybody likes my dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, that that's uh, also a difference, uh, and um, yeah, everybody's like just supporting each other, and yeah, yeah bring my dog. Yeah. He likes it even more than I do. I think. <laughs> in the morning, he's always dragging when we're to close the to the office. yeah. <laughs> in the evening, he doesn't want to leave. That's sometimes a bit difficult then. But that's the perfect dog for the office. Then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say actually the same. Like we have such a great culture in mm. Zalando, and also coming from. Uh, different companies from different countries. Mm. Uh, this is very, very unique. Like this, uh, this mm. friendshipness yeah. almost that we're having, and uh, really you mm. can ask anybody anything, and it's always like start with a yes, you know, mindset. It's like okay, how can we work together mm. on that? How can I support you? And uh, really from that, it's uh, it's it's very unique. It's absolutely unique, and this is something that we really cherish. Yeah. And then when it also when it comes to what makes you excited is also, well, all the cool projects that we're having. Mm. We have lots of projects to work on. Sure. A project could mm. be originally from a problem mm. that we would solve, but still, in the end, it's still a project we have to address. Mm. And our uh, new ideas, if you have a new crazy business yeah. idea, it could be like, mm. okay, we having this usual focus when it comes to mm. understanding our customer, but what if we look at it on the other mm -hmm. way? Uh, how, what can we make out of mm -hmm. this? Maybe there's like a brilliant business idea in mm -hmm. the background, mm -hmm. and can we work on that and mm -hmm. make it grow? So yeah, yeah. all those projects. Mm -hmm. This is uh, and, and uh, the spirit. This is also mm -hmm. like uh, well <coughs> um, encouraged by the company, and, and this is what I like. So it's it's not just like all right, you do what what you're told to do. It's like finding the new ways and and really try out the things. And that, so when when you come in, in the office in the morning, it's like, all right, um, you usually have like uh, some task, you have to take care of some projects, and you know that you can actually do what you want to do there. Mm. Yeah. But first, coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we have free coffee. So on top of that, really. <laughs> that is true. That's true. Good, thanks so much for sharing. Um, and I think we can all agree that also Berlin is a cool city to live in, but I wanted to check with you, what do you think makes Berlin a um, unique place to live? Um, well, I mean, it's Berlin. I think mm. uh, most people already know quite a lot about the city. Yeah. Most of them probably have been here. Mm. I remember in New York, in Brooklyn, it was always said uh, when they were looking for waiters, please don't move. Uh, if you apply, don't, please don't move to Berlin within the next six months. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, but uh, Berlin is more than just like, uh, well, nightlife and everything. It's also like a very, very green city. Uh, you have a lot of parks, uh, Tiergarten, you have then uh, the Forest mm. Grunewald, you mm. have a lot of lakes. Um, well, especially if you have a dog, this is uh, quite comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I live just next to a park yep. and uh, that gives, uh, yeah, th I think that's a big mm. plus for the yeah. quality of the city. I agree, totally. Yep. And Flo, coming Hi. from someone who moved to Berlin. I am. Um, so I actually uh, didn't know what to expect mm -hmm. uh, from Berlin when I arrived. And mm -hmm. I figure out eventually that it's not like it's one Berlin. It's somehow many Berlins, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I could say that. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you love like history mm -hmm. or art, mm -hmm. we have like first like first class world mm -hmm. museum, the Pergamon, the galleries in here. Mm -hmm. If you're a food addict, we have so many restaurants from all kinds of cultures because Berlin is so international that mm. whatever language you speak, you can connect with people speaking mm -hmm. the same. Or if you love, yeah, if you mm -hmm. like the nightlife, then here yeah. you're in the place you have to be, yeah. definitely. But also if you like, uh, yeah, greens, greens, lakes, we have lakes all over. So just True. go and spend and enjoy some yeah. nice time in the weekend. Especially in the summertime. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's super enjoyable right now with the weather that mm. we have. True. Everybody's at the lakes. Yeah. True, true, true. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So I wanted to thank you also for the discussion and the answers so far. We still have some yeah. more, but thank you so much. So now we're going to take some questions from um, the social media channel, so from Instagram, because we asked you to um, share some questions with us. We're going to address them now. But in the meantime, you can also ask the questions on the chat available. So please feel free to share. Now the first question from Marcel from Instagram is, mm -hmm. um, what positions do you have currently open in merchandising? So I think as a recruiter, I can take over the question. Oh, yes, please. Uh, I'm actually supporting merchandising, so I have the best insights. And um, at the moment, I think we have around five to 10 open vacancies um, with different levels. Um, actually, there's quite a few on the um, entry level. So the um, admin support that we have, this is actually category operation specialist role. Then we have quite a few assistant merchandise planners. So this is the first step into the merchandising career. We have one junior merchandise planner and we have one senior merchandise planner open in Flaws team, so in premium category. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, if you want to join, please check our um, career page. And the next question is from Lana or Lena, and she's asking how much freedom do you get in your day-to-day -day job, Chris? Um, well, I think we, we already like had a bit of a that bit, topic, yeah, um, but you have a lot of freedom, and this is uh, one of the reasons why yeah. it's such... Uh, so much fun because, uh, well, as I said before, it's you're encouraged to to mm -hmm. uh, go new ways to to try and uh, fail. Well, try and error is, is one of our slogans, kind of. Um, but uh, this helps you to to find uh, um, new uh, the, the answers to new questions that come up because the market, as we mm -hmm. already talked about, changes a lot. Um, mm -hmm. To not to to find a strategy for the future, mm -hmm. right? What which direction we want to go? What works and what not? You only know it if you mm -hmm. try it out. If you're not yeah. trying it out, it's not working. Yeah. So you receive a lot of freedom uh, mm -hmm. in the way you do it. Uh, important is that you you achieve a certain result, well, mm -hmm. and uh, or that you can explain it. But uh, you how you get there is somehow like uh, left to you. Of mm -hmm. course, you well within yeah. a certain. Uh, range, but this is also like, for example, how I try to to work with my team, mm -hmm. that they get um, the space or the, or the freedom to to do mm -hmm. um, what they well, on to to do what they do on their own. So this mm -hmm. is not to give them too much of a guidance. I guide them, mm -hmm. but not like, all right, you have to do this, this, and this, mm -hmm. and this, and this. Mm -hmm. That they develop their own um, solution for a problem, for a challenge. This mm -hmm. is also what I try to do <coughs> to teach them, and I do sometimes trainings. Mm -hmm where I try to teach them like uh, all right, the KPIs, etc., mm -hmm. in order to, be, to give them the, the skill set and the tools to um, find their own solutions and mm -hmm. strategies and pa ways to, to work. And then when they are successful, then they know that's this, and it's similar for me. When you're successful with something you, you did on your own, then you know that's on you and you, you uh, achieve that. Mm -hmm. It's a difference if you're just like mm -hmm. just doing what someone mm -hmm. told you exactly how to yeah. do it. True. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I would say that actually we have lots, we have a tremendous uh, lot of freedom, mm. but it's not that we just have freedom, it's uh, we have to go and deliver. No, no, we also, as Chris, Christian mentioned, we are accountable for what mm. we are doing, so mm. it makes you think twice, really, mm. like, sh if it would be my company, if mm. it would be my business, would I mm. do this this way? Yeah. Well, uh, what are the risks? Mm. What are the impacts? What are the plus? Mm. How much can I get out of this? And then you mm. assess it better, and that makes you take mm. wider decisions in the end. So yes, yeah. makes you yeah. feel completely responsible for what you're doing. Mm. But also, we always have like the guidance from our top managers and so on. It's not that sure. we have left alone in the wild. Yeah, yeah. No. and you, you're not afraid to like not making a mistake because mistakes happen. Yes. But if <coughs> and if you always try to avoid them, then well, then we'll you learn, will yeah. not try anything new. We'll mm -hmm. just like go the way it was, and that actually mm. just um, for the purpose to say later if it if something went wrong, you can say like, well, but I did that, mm -hmm. as everybody does, mm -hmm. and this is just like an excuse. And so this is encouraging. And this is what I think is is important. Um, yeah. 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 I agree as well. Yeah. Perfect. Um, good. We have one more question from Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, what role does sustainability play at Zalando, and specifically for you as uh, merchandise planners? Well, this is quite a big topic within mm. Zalando. We actually have now our own department mm. <coughs> that is uh, exclusively just taking care of uh, uh, sustainability. Mm. We also have like some internal targets on how much uh, our share of our turnover at a certain time in the future should come from sustainable products, uh, which is quite a high and fair share, I have to, to admit. Mm -hmm. We already have quite uh, a bit in our assortments, especially in uh, our unit. Um, it's quite a share. And what is new on our website, we have a filter now where you can actually filter for mm -hmm. sustainable clothes. Mm -hmm. So if you're actively looking for it, you have already the uh, well possibility mm -hmm. to, to look into it. And uh, I think the difference to, because this is quite a big topic in the market, mm -hmm that uh, it's not just like a marketing act, so it's not just like, all right, we do just like one little collection mm -hmm. that's sustainable, mm -hmm. yeah. that we actually have it in our assortment as a, like a, an important part of the assortment, and that we now actually get our targets uh, or benchmarks for, for the future on how much of uh, our mm -hmm. assortment has to be mm -hmm. uh, sustainable, and not just like sustainable, we call it sustainable, mm -hmm. you know, with original certificates and everything and uh, I think especially mm -hmm. like from the people who work for Zalando this gives it a little bit more mm -hmm. of the credibility because they are also like a bit more have an affection for that topic as well. Mm -hmm. I mean so they say like you have mm -hmm. to be the change you want to see in the world yeah. right and because mm -hmm. we are somehow in the middle between mm -hmm. our brands and our customers like mm -hmm. we are definitely like enablers in mm -hmm. making this change mm -hmm. so uh, when we dis when we observe that uh, we are mm. fully aware that there are some fabric being produced which are mm. made in absolutely horrendous conditions mm. and so on, it's also somehow our duty, right, to yeah. send to spread the message that okay, if mohair is something that should not be supported because the way it's mm. produced, then we decide not to offer mohair mm. anymore. And yes, we have very nice alternative, and. Mm also for the customers really, really aware of that and specifically looking for this, that's when this yeah. filter is super, super <coughs> handy because yeah. you can see that. Yeah, yeah that's the, <coughs> the mindset of the company to really stand for something because it's not that it's like, yeah. it's like is a huge cash driver or something. <coughs> it's more about like, all right, this is what we stand for and this is one, how we want to be and uh, how we want to be seen. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, really important. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can see some more questions, but oh. I just want to add I'm also very, very proud to be part of a company that um, is paying so much attention to sustainability topic. It's yeah, really yeah. Cool. Good. So I have some questions. Um, I can just pick one maybe on the recruitment topic, which I think uh, I can cover then. Yeah. Unless you want to jump in. No, <laughs> no, no go sense. for it. Go for it. But we have a question on what's the typical process, um, the recruitment process in merchandising. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it all starts with an application, so you really need to go to the career website and check what um, current vacancies we have open, um, check if the units or categories are interesting to your um, 
um, um, experience. And then once we get your application, we will definitely have a look and review and get back to you with feedback. If it's a yes, so if we think that uh, your experience matches the criteria, we will give you a call. So we will have a first touch point with the recruiter during which you'll just discuss um, your motivation, your expectations for the new role, some technical details, and if everything goes well, um, the first um, touch point with the business, with the hiring manager, is going to be a hangouts call, so a video interview with um, the hiring manager, during which you'll go into more details with your experience, um, how it translates into the, the new role here at Zalando, and then the last stage is an on-site interview. And here it can be different um, depending on, on the seniority level. So it can be just an hour of an interview um, to discuss the soft skills that we're looking for. But it can also be, I think, two or three hours even where you will have an opportunity to meet uh, different team members, um, peers or some senior um, seniors from, from the unit. So it can be really extensive, but also then you'll get a lot of insights uh, from the team and from the role. Yep. So I think that's the, that's the insight and I think we have uh, one more question which I think you could then address because it's um, yeah, more in merchandising. Go so we on. have a question from Victoria. Uh, do you think that a digital fashion has a future and uh, what is your personal opinion about it? Anyone want to take digital it? Digital fashion. Digital fashion. So digital fashion. Uh, well, I... Yeah? So it's Aha, that's <laughs> actually a very interesting question. When it comes to digital fashion, mm -hmm. if being linked to the fact yeah. that it's something that is made out of the data mm -hmm. that we have yeah. from a customer yeah. perspective, then yes, mm -hmm. it has a big tremendous future. Not saying this is the future, but mm -hmm. definitely there's a big future. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to um, mm -hmm. digital fashion, meaning like something completely designed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. digitally uh, what we see like with 3d printers uh, that I can give a bit of an insight mm -hmm. because actually in private levels we were doing somehow this uh -huh. digital yep. design at mm -hmm. least and it's uh, going completely free mm -hmm. out of samples mm -hmm. so you don't have to speak to factories sending back and forth mm -hmm. you would just completely design something on 3D, on computer based, mm. and this will be, then we are able now with the technology to have it 3D mm -hmm. printed, so you will have already something, like the machine bits on mm. in front of your eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, mm -hmm. this has a future because mm. on Z with Zalando, we're already on it. Mm. Sounds good. Yeah, I, I'm struggling a little, little bit with the definition Understanding the digital, of the <laughs> yeah, it would be good to know more. <coughs> yeah, um, I mean, if, if it's about like uh, online retail, then yeah, yeah. Well, no question. Um, otherwise, well, what I know is that we have like some um, of well, order appointments are now like mm. digital that you do not go mm. actually to a showroom that you see mm. it like a, on a webcam or something mm. or that you get it uh, yeah. as a file on, on your iPad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Otherwise. Um, so yeah, more future than there. Mm. more future than ever for sure. Mm. Good, thanks so much. And I think we have one last um, from Marta, uh, and it's on the recruitment topic. So what are the internal development opportunities once you start at Zalando? I think also Flo would be a good, a good example because yeah. he also moved um, uh, within the structure, he changed uh -huh. the team, so you can tell us a bit more in a second. But from the recruitment point of view, we um, do have tons of different internal opportunities. So of course the natural progression would be uh, from assistant to junior mm. to planner to senior to team lead. Um, but also there's a lot of lateral moves. So you can still stay in your role but you can change the unit or the category or you can move to a different business so you can join the lounge um, business which is actually growing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And also very interesting um, and with you Flo you moved from private labels so I moved to... From, yeah, yeah. from private label into brands but as Christian mentioned you can move from merchandising into buying, into buying or exactly. the other way around or you can even because yep. I mean Zalando is a big website and if you have natural interest into partnership with the mm. brand you can also move into what yep. a department that we call merchant operation where yep. you will be working more on a strategic project mm. on mm. how to build a better Zalando actually mm. so yeah there's definitely horizontally and vertically mm. lots of perspective to grow mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, we're good. good. And I think that's um, everything, unless we have, we do have a question from Donata. So, uh, from current and future trends, is there more customers ready to approach Kickstarters? 
and or there is no information on this what being was the last word? Kickstarters. Kickstarters, is it referring to the You mean like uh, new labels? Kickstarter? Like I don't know. How? No, I think I also don't have enough insights to help you with the question. Well, can you repeat the question? Yeah, of course. Maybe, uh, so it. from current and future trends, is there more customers ready to approach Kickstarters? Like you mean like uh, startup brands, like startup fashion brands, so that's somehow what Might Christian mm. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, mm. I think this is something that's not changing. I think you, this is yeah. something you already have, like uh, just think of the, um, like uh, when uh, the, the mm. that more trend, trend, for example, happened. You always have these, like mm. that new brands are mm -hmm. pushing it. Mm -hmm. Plus now with the coverage, with all the influencer mm. world, it's like you see this tiny bag, yeah. on this influencer and mm. you create a whole new brand out of this yeah. from one day to another. Yeah. So with the awareness mm. and the exposure now that we have with the online world, mm. you can create a super successful mm. fashion brand mm. from one day to the next. Yeah. So mm. really... Mm. I think the only challenge they have is to, have to, to make it actually kind of like sustainable exactly. more in a way that mm. it has a future. If you build it too much on the mm. current hype, Mm. For example, you have just one product or like mm. a certain pr kind of product that will just work for a certain uh, amount of time. So you actually have to have more of a strategy. I think this is what the customer is currently proving that she's buying into a trend. But mm -hmm. like if she's like being loyal to a brand is something mm -hmm. else. This has really to do with like uh, prices, like the value, the quality and the other things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's also a challenge for a brand. Mm -hmm. And that's where somehow as Zalando we have like a lot of insight. So mm. this is where we can really help mm. on developing a brand which starts with one product yeah. to make it a whole collection. Mm. Really that's... Yeah, and, and this is where a lot of brands are also currently or over the last mm. few years failed hard that they just didn't have more than that one mm. product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after a certain time, then it's over. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of successful story actually. What we see. Yeah, yeah. yeah but when when you work yeah, on yeah, that, yeah, but yeah. you have Definitely. on the other <laughs> hand as well, I can think of a lot of mm. brands which were really yeah. big, which are not anymore. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. Thank you so much for um, the answer. I hope it answered Anna's question. I'm not sure, but yeah, hopefully. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I think that's everything and we can wrap up. So thank you so much, Chris and Flo, for all your answers, all the yeah. insights. I think it was very, very interesting. And also thank you everyone for joining us today for the first um, fashion talk on the merchandising topic here at Zalando. And uh, if you want to keep an eye on all our activities, you can follow us on social media. You can join, mm -hmm. you can follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook or Instagram, Insight Zalando. Thank you.